Welcome to this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Without further ado, let's roll that intro and get stuck into this week's news. The triathlon world has been in an absolute state of shock this week following the vicious knife attack on Belgian pro Sophie Hoes near her home in Antwerp. A 26-year-old man has uh, been arrested in connection with the attack and um, he's currently undergoing psychiatric evaluation uh, pre-trial. However, Sophie is sit- lie- has been lying in intensive care for the past week re- uh, following the resulting massive blood loss as well as a punctured kidney that she sustained during the course of the attack. All of us here at the Week in Triathlon, and I'm sure all of you out there as well, send Sophie our best wishes for both a speedy and complete recovery from this vicious incident. Ironman this week has released their updated pro rankings for the the qualification to the Ironman 70.3 World Championship, which as you know will be taking place in Mudalaba, Australia. And there are only 44 days left to qualify. The qualification closes on July the 3rd. And the bottom end of both the women's and men's ranking lists are looking incredibly crowded with no real clear indication of who makes the cut and who won't. But the way the point standing is right at the moment. There are several major names in the world of international triathlon that have yet to make the cut to be able to race the 70.3 World Championships. Those include... Miranda Carefree, Mary Beth Ellis, Rachel Joyce on the women's side still have to be, have to qualify for, for the Ironman, Half Ironman World Championship. On the men's side, you've got Andres Rayla, Ben Hoffman, Andy Potts, Eniko Janos. All of these athletes have yet to qualify and they've only got 44 days left in order to be able to do that. So you can be assured that all of the uh, uh, 70.3 racing that's happening over the course of the next six weeks, the next 40, 44 days, will be packed with excitement as all of these big names battle it out to secure a spot at the 70.3 World Championship. As far as Ironman events are concerned, uh, last week and on Saturday the 14th of May there was the Ironman North American Championship. And interestingly enough, the North American Championship, both the women's and the men's race were taken by German athletes. Go figure. But anyway, it was Julia Gacher of Germany winning for the ladies and Patrick Lang of Germany winning for the men. Meanwhile, this coming weekend, on Saturday the 21st of May, there is the Ironman Lanzarot on the Canary Islands in Spain. On Sunday the 22nd of May, there's going to be the Ironman St. Paulton in Austria, followed by the Ironman Barcelona in Spain, followed by the Ironman 70.3 Chattanooga, Tennessee. And with the, with the exception of the Ironman Lanzarote, all, all of Sunday's races are all 70.3 events. Now onto the world of the Challenge family. As you recall from last week's episode, I said that I would be writing to the Challenge family to find out what's going on as far as their complete lack of news is concerned. I did write to them. I have not received a response to my uh, message that I sent through to them as yet. However, a day after I wrote to them, there was suddenly some news on the Challenge Family website. Could it be a coincidence? Maybe. But the news is relating to a brand new Challenge Family event that's coming onto the European calendar, and that's going to be the Challenge Lisboa, that's Lisbon, Portugal. The race takes place on the 17th of May 2016. No correction. I got the 17s muddled up. It takes place on the 6th of May 2017 and it will be competed over the half distance. It's due to be an incredibly spectator friendly event with the swim taking place on a completely still water uh, man-made lake and that lake has a walking path going around the outside so which means that spectators will be able to walk the path and follow the athletes that they're wanting to follow while they're swimming close to the shore as they make a circuit of the lake and you'll be able to watch 
the athlete swimming up close and personal. The bike leg pancake flat out on a multi-lane highway that's been completely closed off for the event. So the road will be nice and wide enough to be able to ensure that everybody will be able to race the Challenge Lisboa completely drafting free. As far as event specific news with the Challenge family, there were no events last weekend and there are no events this coming weekend. Now onto the world of Xterra. Xterra has announced that last weekend's race in Tahiti would be the first event of the Asia Pacific Tour for 2017. Now, maybe I'm completely calendar challenged over here, but how the fuck does an event on the 14th of May 2016 be part of a 2017 season? Maybe somebody can explain something something about that to me, because really, I, I don't understand how something, not even halfway through the 2000, halfway through 2016, gets to be part of a 2017 season. But there you have it. Go figure. Then, as far as external results are concerned, last week I reported that there were no results available yet from the previous week's uh, Xterra Brazil. Those results have subsequently come in. And I can confirm to you that on Saturday the 7th of May at Xero Brazil, you had Sabrina Gobo of Brazil winning the ladies race, while Albert Soleil of Spain won the title for the men. Then as far as this past weekend is concerned, as I mentioned, on the Saturday the 14th of May, it was Xterra Tahiti. The ladies race won by... Leslie Patterson, back from her devastating Lyme disease that had her sidelined for more than a season, while world champion Josiah Mida won the men's race. Now for the world of ITU. ITU reports that various national federations have started allocating athletes to their respective Olympic teams based on the Thread the Needle World Rankings as they were at the, after the Yokohama uh, World Series for Athlon last weekend. and But for instance, Team USA have only allocated five athletes to their six slots that they have so far. And the ITU has got a very firm policy of use it or lose it. So Team USA, you've got a limited amount of time to be able to allocate a sixth athlete to your squad. But at the same time, each and every athlete that a National Triathlon Federation puts forward as being part to, to race in the um, triathlon at the Olympic Games. Each of those athletes need to be obviously approved by that country's National Olympic Committee so that um, the team, so those athletes can be part of the official Olympic team put forward to the International Olympic Committee. Last weekend on the ITU circuit, as I mentioned earlier, Saturday the 14th of May, was the World Triathlon Series event in Yokohama, Japan. Although Yokohama marks only the fourth event on this year's World Triathlon Series, it marks the end of the two-year qualification cycle for athletes to get into the Olympic Games for Rio. A massive pack came out of the water together and stayed together all the way through the bike leg, and ultimately it would come down to the run. But Gwen Jorgensen was in no mood to mess around, posting a 32-minute run split for 10Ks to take the win. Meanwhile, in the men's race, again, the pack stayed together out of the swim, massive pack all together on the bike leg, and in the end, eight athletes posted sub-30-minute 10K splits, but nobody could come close to Mario Moller. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of the Week in Triathlon. Remember, post any comments, questions, criticisms you have in the comment section down below this video. Share this out amongst all your triathlon friends. Thumbs up if you like this type of content. And remember, down below the screen is a subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel for all the new content that comes out to you daily and so that you'll be able to receive next week Friday's edition of the Week in Triathlon directly to your email inbox. Remember, until we meet again, stay carved up for the win. And I'll see you then. Cheers. Coach Ever. Dot net.